Welcome to the Salish Sea, home of the orcas known as the Southern Residents. Here's Granny in the lead right there. Is that Granny doing the tail slaps? Yeah. She's become really an iconic uh, animal of this iconic species. She seems to be immortal. Orcas are matriarchal. And Granny isn't just the leader of her pod. She's the grand dame of orcas everywhere. With three great-grandchildren and one great-great-grandson, Granny is a whale of a certain age. We know that she's old. We uh, put her birth year as 1911. 1911. George V is crowned king of the British Empire. Builders in Belfast finish constructing the hull of the Titanic. World War I is still three years away, and Granny is born somewhere off the west coast of North America. She was in a capture in 1968 in Vaughan Harbor, Puget Sound. Granny and 14 other orcas were caught by hunters from marine parks who chased the whales with explosives. She was adult then. Balcom determined her age based on her size, status, and relationship with the other whales. Now we get this question all the time. Hmm, maybe you're wrong. Maybe we are, but there are people that are 116, 120. That's an outlier too. <laughs> Granny isn't just the world's oldest orca. She's a supermodel, a politician, and a movie star. Free Willy was my favorite movie as a small child. <laughs> the opening and closing shots of all of the whales breaching and doing all the pretty things are all southern resident killer whales. And about half of the whales in those shots are still alive today. The only reason Granny was left in the ocean to lead her family is because exhibitors considered her too old to start a career in showbiz. <laughs> Saved by Hollywood ageism. The whales taken from Granny's pod included the original Shamu. They were only taking babies out and they released the adults so that they could go out and have more babies and then they could, in the next capture, take them. Most of the world's great whales were hunted for oil, pet food, fertilizer, or to use their parts as prehistoric plastic. But orcas were killed, often shot on sight, just because they eat the same fish we do. There was a, usually a, some sort of offensive against the so-called killer whales that ate our fish. You know, in Canada even, they were strafing them, and the U.S. was bombing them, strafing them, and fishermen were shooting them and throwing depth charges in, trying to get rid of them. They were also killed because most people believed that killer whales were monsters who tormented their prey. <laughs> Just ask the seal. Everything changed in 1964 when the Vancouver Aquarium sent a team to kill a killer whale and use it as the model for a sculpture, a team that included fisherman Joe Bauer. I'm the only one that's still alive. The whole idea was to, to kill a killer whale and to take the measurements in the water because they're so ferocious and everything else, it would be impossible to keep them. And that was there is, uh, because I was a diver that I could do the measurements underneath you know, in the water. The aquarium set up camp on Saturna Island, one of the few places in the world where killer whales swim right next to the shore. We, we thought we'd missed, you know, like it was over, that was it. And then the lines started to move. Then all of a sudden, we seen the other two whales coming there and then lifting Moby up so it could breathe. 
because all of a sudden people showed up on the beach with rifles, with the whale still being alive. Then a lot of these people decided that it was their, you know, thing to come down and take a shot at the whale to help kill it. So then I decided to get out between the guns and the whale. Sam was very ticked off. He was just totally petrified that I was going to be uh, dead. <laughs> I didn't have any fear of the, of the animal. I guess maybe I was just too young and stupid. And then got closer and closer and closer to where I was right to where I could see where the harpoon had gone straight through. And then I hollered back at Sam. I think we got a live whale if we wanted. It was like they'd captured King Kong. They led the whale on an 18-hour journey to Vancouver at the end of the harpoon line. Another whale followed. Possibly Granny. Its relatives were way back that were following at, at quite a distance. The aquarium named the whale Moby Doll. The one day Moby was displayed to the public, an estimated 20,000 people showed up. The polluted waters made it so difficult for the orca to stay afloat that less than three months later, Moby drowned, dying of exhaustion. It's only because we were able to keep that whale alive that we learned as much as we did about orcas, their families and their connections and their intelligence and, and uh, things of that nature. Uh, but uh, people thought that they were just totally killers. I mean, they just killed everything, eh? And uh, that wasn't the case. That sort of began the fad of catching them on purpose and selling them to marine parks. They're worth money. Instead of hunting orcas, humans began loving them to death. As Granny entered her 60s, every aquarium everywhere wanted their own killer whale. Before long, they had taken out about 50 whales, either by capture or by death. Soon, orcas like Granny caught on to the hunter's traps and ignoring the agonizing sounds, swam towards the blasts instead of into the nets. Still, every young orca in the Salish Sea might have ended up doing tricks in tiny tanks, if not for a few scientists determined to study and save the species. I heard about this crazy Canadian biologist that felt he could identify each individual whale in this whole Salish Sea area. Area. Uh, they all look the same when you uh, look at a fin uh, grossly, but when you start looking in detail, they're all really quite uniquely uh, identifiable. And it took us about five years to figure out that uh, there were only about 300 animals here. Most people believe there were thousands of orcas in the area. The American government hired their own scientists to challenge the Canadian research. Well, they contracted me to go out and find out how many whales are on the U.S. side of the border. Michael Big was right and his research led to orcas being declared endangered on both sides of the border. He also discovered there was more than one type of orca. One that feeds mainly on marine mammals, one that feeds mainly on fish. Probably for cultural reasons, uh, they have just uh, traditions of not mixing, and yet they still use the same area. Big gave every pod a letter. The southern residents were J, K, and L. He also gave each whale a number, Ken Balcom, gave them names. We began an adoption program in the early 1980s, and uh, we gave all these whales names. And it made sense to call this one Granny because at, at the time, uh, she was a grandma. This is J2 Granny. She is the oldest killer whale known to humanity, but also the oldest southern resident killer whale. And um, primarily the way that I tell her from everybody else is, her little half moon scar that's pulled out of her dorsal fin. She's got a little piece missing there. Identifying the whales allowed scientists to get to know each individual orca. Perhaps the biggest surprise. They live beyond their reproductive age. People and pilot whales and the so-called killer whales are the three species of mammals on the planet that have a menopause, a prolonged life after reproduction, which is then you start thinking philosophically and uh, evolutionarily about what is the advantage of that. The answer? Wisdom. Scientists call this the grandmother hypothesis. The uh, value of having old whales is that they know the whole system and they lead the others and they make it sit.
Orca culture is complex, sophisticated, and if scientists saw anything like this on another planet, they'd declare we'd found intelligent life. When all of the pods come together for the first time, they line up facing each other, but quite a distance away. And they stay like that for a little bit of time. And then they all swim together, and they go underwater, and they come up all mixed together, and they have a big party. Uh, it's a big deal for them. So we think a young killer whale learns, learns its language, learns what to eat, it learns uh, how it's going to interact socially from its kin. And if that's not culture, then I don't know what culture is. They really need their moms to be a part of their lives. And the male whales just never leave mom. They're huge mama's boys. In 2010, our century-old granny hooked up with a 20-something male whale from Alpod who had lost his mother. Since then, Granny and Onyx have been almost inseparable. I kind of jokingly refer to them as uh, Harold and Maude. Maybe they're just friends. Maybe. One of the things that old females do for young males is they know who the reproductive girls are. So they, they get the boys worked up and then they swim over and introduce them to one of the girls. They don't just have sex to make babies at a specific time. They have sex whenever they feel like it. They have sex for fun, just like we do. Between the summer of 2015 and the spring of 2016, the Southern residents had their biggest baby boom in almost 40 years. The reason? A banner year for their favorite food, Chinook salmon. They depend very heavily on specifically Chinook salmon, and a lot of the, their food is going to us. So what can we do to help Granny and her family survive and thrive? We've got to understand that all life on Earth is uh, dependent on uh, the sustainability of the resources. People should start getting active about dealing with environmental degradation and not allowing any more environment to be compromised and really get behind recovery efforts. Pay attention to what you're putting in the water. These whales are very, very susceptible to pollutants in our marine environment. Killer whales have so many of the same attributes that humans do that we should recognize that they have rights as well. They do understand that their environment has changed, that the Salish Sea has changed, that, that food is harder to find, um, that, that uh, the water is different now. And it's very compelling to see the story of this matriarch who has led her family through all of this extraordinary history. When we were filming, our star arrived near Victoria for her close-up. After racing out to meet her, Granny greeted us with tail slaps. Then a spy hop and then something we haven't found in any other footage anywhere. A perfect breach. Over a century old and still a movie star. If one orca can live for over a century, perhaps there is hope for her species. And ours. Oh, my God.